Greetings everyone, Kyle Universe here, and I'm on the road to Marceline, Missouri. Yeah, it's a little foggy out here right now. Honestly, it kind of reminds me of the video game Silent Hill, just because it's like you'll be driving and just slowly out of the fog, like buildings will just kind of come at you. It's like, oh my gosh, that's creepy. <laughs> But if you're a Disney fan, then you probably know exactly why I'm going to Marceline. You see, Marceline is actually the hometown of Walt Disney, back when he was a little boy. And what makes it even more interesting is that Walt Disney himself said that a lot of his greatest memories from his childhood came from his time in Marceline. And I've always wanted to go see the town. Alright, I finally made it. There's the Marceline sign right there. And as you can see, the weather has gotten a little bit worse. It's cold, it's rainy, and I had to switch to my thermal wear. <laughs> well, thermal wear being just a heavy jacket and like my hat, but you know, whatever. But I am really excited to go down there and see Marceline. It's like, so let's take a trip, shall we? You know what would be cool if they did for the Marceline water tower? If they put ears on it, you know, kind of like uh, the water tower that's at MGM Studios or Disney Studios, <laughs> that'd be awesome. Oh look, there it is. This house that you're seeing right here, this was Walt Disney's original house. Wow. Well, we'll get back to that later. Let's see the town first. Here we go. Entering the town of Marceline. So Marceline, it is believed to be the original inspiration for Disneyland. And you can see from the similarities how it is. So it was basically just the look and feel of Marceline that inspired Main Street. Um, a lot of like uh, the architecture and stuff was inspired by Fort Collins, Colorado, which maybe we'll get to that someday. Ooh, there's a place I know something about. Okay, so right over here is the famous Marceline Coca-Cola mural. Now the history behind this building is fascinating because if you notice the front part of the building, it looks very similar to a building at Disneyland, doesn't it? Well, it's been speculated that this building inspired Coke Corner at Disneyland. Now the reason behind that is that this gigantic Coca-Cola mural right here was painted around the time that Walt Disney moved to Marceline as a little boy. There was actually another building here, well, it was an add-on to the original building, and it was blocking the mural, but then that building had a fire and burned down, and it revealed the faded Coke mural. Well, with rumors speculating that this was the building that inspired Coke Corner at Disneyland, the Coke company sent their own group of painters out to retouch it up and make it look like it did today. So that's really awesome that they did that. And right over there is the Uptown Theater. So one year after Disneyland was opened in 1956, Walt and Roy were invited back here to Marceline. And to everyone's delight, they accepted. And this very theater right here showcased their movie, The Great Locomotive Chase. This movie played from 1.30 p.m. to 1.30 a.m. the next morning. And Walt and Roy, they stood right over there and greeted each child as they entered the theater. Before it started, they even had the kids sing the Mickey Mouse March. And it's actually interesting because they didn't get the Mickey Mouse Club out on TV here until much later. So they had to learn it at school. And this is also the site where the Disney company decided to showcase the spirit of Mickey back in 1998. It was basically a straight to VHS of Mickey Mouse cartoons from the 30s and 40s. So right up here on the right is E.P. Ripley Park. Now if that name sounds familiar, it's because it's the name of the train at Disneyland. And see that gazebo back there? Walt and his family would even listen to band concerts from it. That might have also inspired that gazebo that used to be in the front of Disneyland. And coming up over here on our right, is the old train station, which they've now turned into the Walt Disney Boyhood Museum. Now, this tree 
tree is a little overgrown in the front here, but there's a photo of Walt and Roy standing right over there. Well, I just got done with the family museum and saw so many great things, but unfortunately they wouldn't allow filming in there. So I took a lot of pictures, so maybe I'll make a separate video of that, of all the stuff that I saw and just talk about them. But there's one more thing I need to see before I leave town. So you kind of have to park down there because, um, of course, Walt Disney's old house right here even though it is a historic site, it is a real house, so people are living there right now. So, of course, you can't just walk up to it and say, like, hey, you know, can I look around? Of course not. You know, you got to be respectful for other people's property. Wow, just seeing this place is surreal. It's like I can imagine a young Walt Disney just playing on that porch right over there. Man. Now, before Walt Disney moved here in 1906, he lived in Kansas City with his family. And I can imagine just the change in, like, atmosphere. I mean, I myself, well, I come from the suburbs, but um, I can imagine how much a kid would react to going from a big city like Kansas City into a small town like Marceline. It's like, that would be, like, my dream. When I was a little kid, I know I always liked to explore the woods and just, you know, just see what I could find out there, go on adventures. So even now, with a place such as this, with all this wooded area and just this countryside just to explore, I would have had a field day. And I imagine Walt Disney did years ago as well. Oh my gosh. Now behind the house and down on the property a little bit is this walkway that leads to Walt Disney's Dreaming Tree. Now what the Dreaming Tree is, it was a place that Walt Disney even said himself that he would come and just fantasize. Just, he would just daydream for like hours underneath this Dreaming Tree. However, sadly, the tree is not standing upright today. I mean, it is pretty old and it fell over quite a little bit ago and they have this fence right in front of it to, I guess, protect people from, you know, pulling a piece off of it and getting a memento or something. But it was right around, I'd say, uh, back in that area where Walt Disney and Roy, uh, when they came back to Marceline, mm, I think that was in the mid-50s, and they took a picture with it right there. So nowadays, yeah, it's just kind of lying here. But it's still cool that it's around. And it's also cool that they want to preserve it and put this fence here to protect it. I mean, you could just walk around it, but I would like to think that Disney fans have a little bit more respect for property than, you know, people that would just want to steal stuff like that. However, even though the Dreaming Tree is gone, there is something new growing right here. It's called the Sun of the Dreaming Tree. And someday, this tree will be just as tall as the regular, or the original dreaming tree. It's actually really cool because they got soil from the Magic Kingdom in Florida and waters from Rivers of America to plant this tree. That's awesome. So right down here is soil from the Magic Kingdom. A little piece of Disney World out here in Marceline. If you go further down the path, you will see this barn that's placed right here. Walt Disney has said that one of the most important parts of his life was his time spent here on the farm. And a lot of the stories that he came up with was inspired by his farm life here. Now in 1949, there was a Disney film called So Dear to My Heart. It's okay. I mean, you know, for, a, for what it was, it's okay. But this movie had a barn in it. And when designing the barn, Walt Disney drew inspiration from his own memory of the barn he had on his farm here in Marceline and put that in the film. Now this barn isn't the exact barn that was here when Walt Disney lived here, but it is a recreation from his memories for it. Well, actually it's a recreation from the barn so dear to my heart, which he then made again to make as a barn on his own property out in California. And then they made this one off of that one, which was based on so dear to my heart, which was based on the Marceline barn. Got that? But I'm about to show you the coolest part of this barn, and this is really awesome.
inside this barn, people have left hundreds or even, th no, I'm going to say thousands, thousands of messages to Walt Disney. It's just really cool how all the fans have just come together and just wrote like little messages saying, basically, thank you, Walt Disney, for creating a world that we all can enjoy your imagination. See, all of these signatures were inspired by this beam right here. And as you can see, it came from Disneyland. See, what happened was, before this barn got built, this beam was at Disneyland and people signed their names to it. And of course, when it went up here, people who visited the barn saw it and they're like, oh, well we can just sign our names on the inside of the barn. Which, that wasn't the original case, but the people who own the property, they were like, eh, you know, why not? So they made the inside of the barn accessible to write for everyone, which is really cool. That's a great idea. I love that. And someone has written, Floor, will you marry me? And she said yes. However, yes has a big X through it, so I hope that the engagement wasn't broken off, or... I mean, hopefully uh, that's not the case, but... Eh. That. I, I don't know. People have signed all over this barrel right here. And this bench actually was at D23, you know, the Disney Convention Expo. And lots of fans signed their name to this, and then they moved it out here to Marceline. That's pretty cool. But even though this place is mostly filled with Disney fans, well, I mean, they're all Disney fans, there are a few names that you might find really interesting. Like right here, sorry if it's a little hard to see, but there's a drawing of Big Thunder Mountain Railroad. Yep, see there's the train right there. And it was drawn by Tony Baxter. Now of course, Tony Baxter is a Imagineer who, well, Big Thunder Mountain is one of the ones he designed. So yeah, it's pretty cool that he put there. And right here is a drawing from my favorite cartoonist, Jim Davis. That is so cool. And now I have to find the correct place for me to leave a message. And I think I found the right spot. That beam right up there. There we go. So I decided to do the opening of Walt Disney's dedication to Disneyland address in 1955. To all who come to this happy place, welcome. Kyle Universe. I even put my little planet logo there. So if you're ever out in Marceline and you want to see my signature up there, just come through the door right here and then look up and it's like the like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, like 13th beam that's going across right here. You know, being out here in Marceline, it's actually really humbling because I've seen the places that Walt Disney walked, where he stood, where he lived. And when you really think about it, he was just a normal person, like you or me. You know, it's like, because I personally didn't know Walt Disney, and I know a lot of us didn't, we think of him as like this, this legend, or like this god. But when you, when you really get around here, like walk, like right here past the dreaming tree, or the son of the dreaming tree, you realize that he was here too. You know, he was just a normal kid who just, had big dreams, and he made them all come true. And if he can do it, all of us can do it. And that's really inspiring. It's like, never, never be afraid to dream big. And, you know, it may be hard. I'm not gonna say it's gonna be easy, but all of us can make our dreams come true. If Walt Disney can do it, and he came from these humble beginnings, then I think we all can do it. And that's what I take away from Marceline. And that's, that's a good lesson to take away. <laughs> Thank you for joining me. I'm Kyle Universe. I'll see you out there.